Minister, how are you doing? Thank you for joining us, Minister Brian Manning. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for having me. Hope all is well. Morning, morning, morning. Um, is this sweater are you looking, looking small? Also? Sorry? Is this sweater are you looking small or Olympic? <laughs> <It's something laughs> called actually exercising. The <laughs> man playing basketball and thing all, all over again. The man real fit these days. <laughs> I try my best, trust me. Well, thank you so much for the invite on Sunday. Thank you so much for the invite. The entire Power Breakfast show will show up. Good. Good. I'll look out for you. What are you talking about now again? His mom's birthday is on Sunday. And where do you think you should be invited? Why not? I mean, she, she's she, my good friend. We were close for years. <laughs> Many years. For many years. Good morning. Let's just say all right. Let's get into the meeting. My dog trying to get between us, uh, uh Steve. I, I, I don't know, boy. I don't know. <laughs> I'm trying to save your family. Comings. I'm trying to save your family gathering from somebody eating. <laughs> <laughs> unless you're unless you're making a load of, a, a load of doubles, and I don't see and ice again. cream and everything. So, mm. anyway, Love ice cream. thank you for joining us this morning. We wanted to discuss the impending property tax which kicks in well it's active now but uh the deadline is september 30th and just clarify what people can expect those who have not received assessments uh all. how is it going from the ministry's perspective and who's collecting this is it being collected by the regional corporations as initially proposed at the at the revenue offices, so that's the, the place to go right now. I mean, this has been a, a uh, tremendous initiative. You have to remember, this is the first time that we have been inv involved in a process like this one. And we've been trying to really update our, our property tax system since about 2008. So it has taken close to 15 years to really get to, to this point, uh, to ensure that we have a more evolved and updated property tax system. I mean, if you remember what happened before, what obtained before, we had a, a flat land and building tax on the overall market value of your property of about 7.5%. Now we have a far lower 2% uh, tax on the annual rental value of your property, which is one of the lowest tax rates in the Western Hemisphere. So these property taxes, of course, will be used to underpin local government activities, which is the you know, filling of potholes, repairing roads, drainage, uh, sewer systems, overall infrastructure is what we intend to use these funds for. So it has been very challenging. We have had some, some uh, I would say, um, impediments to the entire process, but it's something that's coming along and will be implemented and is being implemented. Minister, is it going directly to the local government or is it going into a consolidated fund that everything mysteriously goes into and is apportioned by the Minister of Finance? So you may think my, my road bad, but they're actually fixing a road in Maruga. No. And, and you're saying, well, what are pay my property tax for? No, if, if you were looking at the legislation and the, the, the what is coming from the Minister of Finance, it goes into a fund for the local government bodies. And it actually, by law, cannot be used for anything else other than local government activities. I mean, that's one of the, the, the updates or the evolution of the of the property tax system for local government activities that was implemented by law so it cannot be used for anything else other than local government activities yeah but the baseline right, right. you know is it a group fund or is it that yeah. arima people know that this money it's a portion arima taxpayers paid 50 million dollars yes or, that's yeah, the, that what i'm saying or is it just a big fund we know the number of properties in each area, and, and that's how it is apportioned to each area of funds. Wherever you pay your property taxes will be used in your community. If ministers have not yet yeah. gotten assessments, what should they do? Uh, wait until they get an assessment. If, if you have received a property tax notice, that is, is what you have to pay. You couldn't know exactly what your property tax rate would be if you have not received a property tax notice. So once you receive that, then you would know exactly what you have should all those do. notices going out to property owners in the country to your knowledge no that's why we've had to push back that that date a few times because it has been challenging you know we've had to update the entire system to ensure that people's information was correct whether your your address was correct your full name you know those things and then it has to go to the board of inland revenue not board but it goes to inland revenue where it's then again processed and then 
the assessment is sent out based on your on your your name and your address. And if you've neither if you neither received a notice or an assessment, what should you do? Um, you could reach out to the to the valuation division one to get an assessment in terms of the value of your property, and also reach out then to IRD or Inland Revenue for your tax notices. Your tax notice you couldn't get a tax notice without having a valuation on your home. So the valuation division would be your first port of call in a situation like that. So, so is it that the date of 30th December may also change? Here, why I'm asking that. I actually have my two assessments in front of me now, right? Yes. One was dated 26 February that gave the date as 30th of September. Yes. The other notice I got, and that figure was higher than the second one that I got, yes, right? Yes, because it was reduced from 3% to 2%. Right, but the second notice that's dated 20th June also has the deadline date as 30th yes. of September. That may also be adjusted at some point, but that's based on, on a call to be made by the Minister of Finance, and he will decide in due course exactly what will be done in that situation. Right. So let me ask a, a couple other things on my situation. It, it also says, the last paragraph, objection to assessment. If you dispute, if you dispute this assessment, Notify the Board of Inland Revenue in writing within 21 days from the date of receipt of the assessment. Yes. Is that also very is not also very subjective because or, or it goes to the date of the of the letter that you got? No, it goes to the date of the of the letter that you got. Once you once you receive, because we know when it was sent out. And when we send it out, you should receive it within two or three, two or three business days. So you you whenever you get, get it, the 21 days is the time period that you have from the receipt of the tax notice. But I could safely tell you, Minister. Or, or, or from the issue of the tax notice, I should say. Right, but I could safely tell you, I didn't well, get no, mine. No, no, well, wait, what does it actually say, Wendell? It because says... It can't say both. Did. It can't say issue and receipt. It has to say yes. one or the other. From it, an issue says, when we issue right. the tax notice, it is going to be sent to the, your address within two or two, three business days. It is your obligation to receive your tax notice to the address that you have given us as the property or your mailing address. So we send it to the mailing address that people have given for themselves. So then right. you have to, to receive your notice and then make payment in due course. Well, I'm, I, I could safely tell you I didn't get mine within that, 20, within that two to three days. So by the time I got mine, my 21 days was practically... No, you, you, you wouldn't know if you got it within, within the two to three days. No, you, I, you I have to know when we sent it out. Right, well, it's dated 20th of June. So is that the date I'm using my 21 days from? Yes. Well, not then, if it then, says receipt. If it, not if it says from days of receipt. You would have gotten it within two to three days of issue. You would have the issue date on the notice. You couldn't have the date of receipt on it because... You know, it's two to three days from the point that we sent it. Yeah, right. but what so if it says 21 days from receipt, it cannot be the issue date, not from a legal perspective. The receipt date is two and, to and three if they days wanted, after if they, the And if they wanted a clear receipt date, they should have sent it by registered mail for which you had to sign. Yes. Right. Then, that, that's, that's then the 21 be. days is probably curated, so to speak. Well, yes. if, I mean, if you but otherwise, I think Wendell, to... I think what will happen is that there would be some latitude um, in terms of the object objection date because you'd be saying, "Well, I only received it," so and they will probably exercise some discretion that you can still. It has to be the, the law is not going to be that strict in terms of you know down to the last second or minute of receipt in terms of determining whether you should or shouldn't pay property taxes. The law yeah. has already said that you have to pay property taxes. Right. So, you so, and any kind of, of dispute over minutes and seconds is not going to prevent you from having the obligation of paying your property taxes. Right. So, I so that's why I want that cleared up because data receipt can't can't be date of of issue. It, or it, is, of it is close enough. It is it is right. approximate. So, right. it, it's not like it's a week or two weeks or a month. It's within two to three days of the notice being actually printed and issued that you would receive mm -hmm. your property tax notice. Mm -hmm. or, right. and it would be sent to the address that you have given as your mailing address. Fine. You know what is amazing? You know, you know how our mail works sometimes, Minister. You know how it works. No, sir. Yeah. TT Post, we have been working closely with TT Post in this effort, and it has been given priority, and you have received your notice within two to three business days of issue. 
But I, I'm not arguing with this because I know I didn't. So I'm not arguing. But mm -hmm. anyway, another question is, is the issue of the payment. It says this payment is assessed for the period ending 31st of December 2024 in accordance to the Property Tax Act, right? And you have to pay it by 30th of December. I'm assuming that that payment that they put there is for the entire year of 2024? Is for the year, correct. Mm -hmm. From January to December 2024. Yes, and that's why there's been a far less outcry now that the, the tax notices have been issued as opposed to when the valuation notices were issued. When we sent out the valuation notices, some people mistakenly believe that that was the amount that they had to pay for the year, which was incorrect. Mm -hmm. That was simply your annual rental value based right. on the overall value of your property. Of course, the property tax is 2% annually for your annual rental value. And that is what you would have been issued by the Board of Inland Revenue. And that is the actual amount that you have to pay for the entire year. Right. So I'm assuming then that as of 1st of January 2025, that figure will now kick in also again for that year of 2025. For the, for the new year, correct. But when and, will that be? Unless, unless there are any changes announced by the Ministry of Finance. Right. And is that deadline also going to September of 2025 or it may be a shorter period? It may be, but it's subject to change. As, as I okay. said, the, the Minister of Finance may decide to make a change there because of the timing of when the assessments were sent out, the, the right. tax assessments. Minister, are you willing to take some calls because the, the audience sure. has quite a few questions? Yeah. Yeah. No, but I, 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 I just want to ask one other question. That we have done uh, this. I, I just want to ask one other tax. question uh -huh. that, that, that's been raised. We have a Ministry of Digitization. Yes. And yet, this big rollout of property tax, as far as I'm aware, you can't pay it online. Yes. That, that is and a... that's incredulous to me. Yes. That the government has a Ministry of Digitization where you're moving in a particular direction. A huge task for thousands of homeowners across the country having to pay substantially more and you're saying, no, you have to go into revenue offices. Yes, and, and that's something that it's, you're absolutely it's correct. It's ridiculous. On. You're absolutely correct on that. And there should be an announcement within the next few weeks in terms of how to be able to pay online. Until then, you, you have to use the revenue offices, which are available in every community. But we do accept that the, the electronic version of payment has to be implemented, and it will be available within the next few weeks. In, minister, in you spoke year, earlier on in September, you know, Minister. Agreed. And it's the of September that that you have to pay by. It, it is I, for now. And I think he's hinting stuff. that that date will change, Richard. I'm saying it may change. I, I didn't definitively say it will change. I'm saying that's up to the Minister of Finance, and right. he would make an announcement at the appropriate time. Yeah, I I accept the hint. Yeah. <laughs> you, you you mentioned earlier on that when Richard asked a question that. For example, if Arima Bar Corporation collects $60 million, uh, it's apportioned to the Arima Bar Corporation for use by law to do corporation things. Yeah. <laughs> this may not fall into your garden, but what happens if particular corporations who've already indicated, some of them, that they are not in favor of this, don't use the money for borrow-focused uh, Repairs yeah. of roads and etc. What is that? Does that now fall within the remit of the Minister of Local Government, or will they be breaking the law? How are how are Burgesses to yes. to to identify that? Well, I paid my property tax. A year has passed. My roads are still terrible. My drains are in disrepair, etc. etc. Yeah, I, I I don't think there's been any uh, there's been any state body that has said. That they've been getting enough receiving enough funding for activities also the law states that it has to be used for materials and certain activities for instance you couldn't use the property tax um, revenues to add more employees to the corporation there's a, a thin narrow segment that where that spending can be done legally if not you're in violation of the law and then if you know anyone is if anything is reported you would be you know, assessed by the law as to whether you have committed. But I'm talking about the Burgesses now who would have paid their property taxes and, and complied with the law, and they're not seeing, they are not seeing the changes that they 
want to see in their communities because they have paid property tax yes hopefully to get these services provided they would have grounds for complaint of course and the corporations have an obligation to do the job that they have received funding to do of course you know some of our corporations may have efficiency issues but the the this is to make sure that the funding is at least made available so that those uh, activities can be conducted you, you know if there's a challenge there in terms of, of funding as against the actual work being done that is something that can be um, determined by the law if someone decides to take it to go that route but we already have those challenges in some of these corporations so some of them do have efficiency issues but we are mm -hmm. ensuring that going forward that the problem is not going to be a lack of funding because mm -hmm. i think most of the corporations have accepted that they do not receive significant or sufficient funding for all of the activities that they want to, to do over the course of a period. And we have accepted that the local government um, framework is one that isn't working. And that was what the, the government had, its campaign was based on local government elections of last year, that this system here is failing, it is not working. So we are trying to, to upgrade and evolve the entire local government system. And part of that evolution involves how local government activities are funded and we have decided that property taxes is the best way to fund local government activities because property owners are the ones that benefit the most from local government activities but i think paul paul's question pointed to a penalty in the event that they don't use it for the purposes it was meant to what happens yes it, it, that is available it's also in the legislation there's criminal penalties there's financial penalties, there's public review. Minister Manning, you well know that it is on record in the parliament that there's several corporations that haven't even filed audited financial returns for decades, in some instances as much as 15 years. So while people are paying these taxes, they expect a particular return on it because yes. it's another financial hardship on them. And to wait for if a corporation or a, and this is not really directed at you, this is people's, people's going to be responding in this way yes. and saying that, well, they ain't providing financial audited statements. We can't hold them accountable because they ain't doing that because we ain't gonna know what to do with the money as they provide the financial audited statements. Yeah. Uh, so this, it's a it's a convoluted process to get redressed. I, I, I was about to remind you that I'm in the Ministry of Finance. <laughs> Some of these <laughs> questions would have to be directed to the Ministry of Local Government. Our job is to ensure that, your colleague. That, the, that the funding is available. Right next door in San Fernando, the too. That they want to carry out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you would have to ask my colleague about, you know, internal issues and workings within the local government bodies. Our Someone called earlier and was very adamant that he is determined not to pay property tax until commercial, industrial uh, start collecting taxes and those. And the Minister of Finance was asked this in, in one of the debates. Yes. Leading to this. And he did give an indication that it is a timeline. Can you identify that timeline when yes. those entities are going to start receiving uh, instructions to pay taxes? I can give an exact timeline, but that is something that definitely will be implemented. You know, as soon as we get this part of it done, you have to remember, we have about, I think it's just over 600,000 properties in Trinidad and Tobago. About 400,000 of them are residential properties. We, are, we want to use property taxes to underpin uh, local government activities. So if you want to have the sufficient funding to carry out these activities, you would have to address the residential properties first. It's a massive exercise that has taken over 15 years for us to complete. So we have been working diligently with especially hardworking people at the valuation division, also at the Board of Inland Revenue. To, first of all, the integrity of the data is something that we had to assess and to ensure was correct so that people would, would receive a, a, a sensible and reasonable notice. But has so, the state, has the state meaning the government? Yes. And, and the property, the collection of property tax and the process for collection of property tax is one part of it. And as you said, it has been quite a journey to get here, to get yes. the resumption of property tax as, as the word, as the classification of property tax in that land and, and, and whatever really? it is. But that's just one part of the equation. Collecting the tax is one thing. Having the corporations and the, the city corporations and the borough corporation working efficiently is just as important as collecting the taxes because you could collect all the taxes you want, send the money to the corporations, and they still not are able because of their inefficiencies to do that under the same government. How do you respond to that? Yeah. 
given that no, they have, and you've identified the, the inefficiencies in some corporations and i don't think i don't think the state has placed enough emphasis on that mm -hmm. equal to collection because if you can collect all you want put the money there and if the corporation is not efficient it's the same outcome for the public yeah let, let me finish answering the first question first right the, the, is, we have just over six hundred thousand properties in trinidad and tobago but just over 400,000 of them are residential. We have about 100 plus thousand in terms of uh, commercial, and then the rest would be agricultural lands. So in, uh, uh, clearly, if you wanted to implement a system where you had enough funding for local government activities, you had to go residential first. Also, residential property owners are the ones that will benefit the most from local government activities. Now, what you just mentioned there is absolutely correct in terms of the efficiency of our, our um, local government bodies. And there's a policy for, for local government reform. And that reform is going to lead to a far more efficient uh, local government process where a lot of these activities are going to be addressed. You have to remember, with local government reform, we are really reducing the level of bureaucracy. No longer will, will a request to fill a pothole have to go to the ministry, have to go to cabinet, and then have to go to parliament. Because that, that's the system we have now. They're just levels of bureaucracy that make things untenable. We have given autonomy to the various local government bodies. Minister so Manning, with the, I'm a little thing to you, but with the greatest respect, mm -hmm. the road to hell is paved with great intentions. And policies of reform does not necessarily mean that local government bodies, some of which have stated emphatically that they're not in, on this at all, is going to mean yeah, they, they, that, they, they that, your, your wonderful not, mother, your wonderful mother championed this decades ago. Yes, local and it didn't change. I'm going to I bite my tongue. Implemented yeah. yet. You couldn't implement local government reform without the necessary funding. So it, it's a lockstep program. You had to get the funding available first and then reform local government. So if one leads to the other, I couldn't reform local government and say, well, you have autonomy and you can do certain things, and you don't need to receive funding from the Consolidated Fund, you have your own pool of resources when there was no pool of resources. You had to have the resources there first, then reform local government, and then make sure that things are done within the legal parameters that have been set and determined by the mm. legislature or the parliament. Tell me something, Minister. Two questions. One, somebody just asked me, sent a question for me to ask you. Vacant land that do vacant people with vacant land, no house on it, do they have to pay property tax um, because they have not received the assessment as yet for their vacant land? They have yeah. received it for their, uh, apparently they have a, a residence mm -hmm. elsewhere, but they said for their vacant land, they have not received property. And another person just sent a question asking, does the same, same system hold for Tobago or is something different happening under the THA? Yeah, no, last time I checked, we had the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago. It's the same system in both islands and um, the, the if you're a property owner it determines of, it depends sorry on it, whether it's residential it's commercial or agricultural but you will eventually receive a property tax notice for any land that that you own so that's that's the bottom line guys that's okay, what we but they're saying that they haven't received that is there a preference being given to residential land where people are actually have residences is that is that where the preference is? No, I don't think I don't think that's where the preference is. They just may not have received it as yet. Mm. The lines are open. Yeah, let's take a couple of calls with Minister. Minister Manning, you don't wonder you you I have I have a stated view on local government reform, eh? Because of how long I spent which in is, there. Which is what? <laughs> which is that it, it's it's a hoax. I've said it. Local government reform. Yes. I've said it. It's a because hoax. Government has right. publicly stated that the local government system in its current format is not working. And that you is why you have to champion local government reform and also reform of the financing of local government activities. And that is why these two programs, property taxes and local government reform, work together in lockstep to ensure that we have a better system that actually delivers the services that the people of Trinidad and Tobago want. I right. hope I call. Think... Let's get into this call. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Manning. First of all, let me apologize if my tone gets a little rowdy. Yeah, I am. We're just making it short. I have a lot of calls coming through. Okay, Mr. Manning, I so listen to what you're saying there. What you're saying there doesn't make a lot of sense to me. You are saying that you have to make the get the money before you do the reform. That seems to me you're putting the cart in front of the horse. 
in my mind, you set policies. So when the money comes, policies is, in, is already established to secure the money. Second of all, I am having the problem right now trying to get certain things from local government. And the, 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 they, ne- they never have machinery. They never have equipment. Right. The truck right. breaks down. The, 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 all kind of excuses why they cannot do certain things. And I know you're going to tell me, well, they need the money to fix the equipment. That, is, that does not happen on the ground, Mr. Manning. All right, let me I'm let me not one for people to, to, to I, I, I don't think all right. We have cause we think red thank you. Thank thank you. From legislation because that's exactly what it's trying to address. You, you local government reform gives the, many of the regional bodies autonomy so that they don't have to make requests to the ministry of local government and then to the ministry of finance and then to cabinet to get simple things done. We accept that the current local government system is not working. That's exactly what the local government campaign was last year for the government. We said it's not working, we are offering reform. But part of that reform says that each local government body will have a pool of resources so that they can make quick decisions. It leads to better efficiency, where they can decide if there's a portal that needs to be repaired, I don't have to call the Minister of Local Government to get funding. We have a pool of resources there. But, but, but money that, alone doesn't on, mean efficiency. That That's my contention. Hold on, and that things can be done far quicker than, than the previous system. We accept that the funding hasn't been available. We accept that the current system is in some case, cases unworkable, and that is why the reform has to be there and why the funding has to be available for the reform. There's no reform without funding. I think Good morning, caller. Clear and obvious. Yeah, yeah. hi. Morning. Morning. My question, my question is, um, okay, when the resources come, the transference, I've been listening, and they say the estate, local government estate officers are supposed to be transferred into a community policing situation. And uh, I don't know what is the follow-up on that. And would the, when the resources come, would we see better urban planning within the environment, illegal vending, illegal buildings, um, you know, better aesthetics. Uh, um, but these illegal things, because the community policing is connected to that kind of and um, taking things in, is the training happening? What is happening around this situation of community policing in holding a better urban planning infrastructure yeah. where everything is wherever, wherever, whatever? Yes. At this moment. I, okay. I, I, think Thank that's you. A, I think that's an excellent question. And one of the challenges that we've had is, is not having enough um, community police. We have not had enough. And a lot of that sometimes comes down to available funding, just like. Uh, URP workers and so on, uh, or corporation employment. That's been difficult to do some of those things because of the inconsistency in funding, because the system is absolutely bureaucratic to get some of those things done. And, you know, so reform is supposed to shorten the, the or reduce the levels of bureaucracy involved in getting simple tasks done. And we expect it to make more funding available for some of the other fundamental aspects in terms of planning, more yeah. um, community police, and the other resources that well, yeah. a well, it, would need to function efficiently and properly. Yeah. Well, it also envisages some new office holders too in the different corporations. I know that. Yes. yes. Like the yes. councillors now would be from a full-time position yes. and, and not a, a part-time position as obtains today. So you would have a councillor yes. that is working 24-7 for you and instead of part-time because that's what the job allows for now. So there are many changes that are involved in local government reform that should lead to greater efficiency across the board. We were, we were told by the Prime Minister, we had him on late last year, that many of those other parts of the Act would have been uh, operationalized and proclaimed at the start of 2024. Clearly, there's been pushback and pushback and delays. Is there any new timeline and when those aspects, because that is also part of the efficiency, those internal changes in the corporations. Yes, well, as I said, the, that, the legislation itself is based on the funding from property taxes. So the property taxes, there had to be a stream of revenues first before we could implement some of those reforms legislatively. So now that we're getting this done, and this is, like I said, this has never been done before. The land and building taxes system was in place for almost 100 years, and it was about 7.5% of the overall property value. That has now been reduced to the level that we have now. So as soon as we get this area done where there's a flow of revenues to the corporations, then we can implement, for instance, first implement full-time counselors, which is going to require full-time salaries. 
And with, if the funding isn't available for some of those things, it, it just couldn't get done. The funding had to be there first. Minister Manning, you know what has been my angst for the, oh, the last 25 years, and it spans all the governments, so it's so, because I've experienced all the governments, is the fact that local government has never been proposed as part of this constitution. So I don't even know why we're going through all this, you know. Because it's part, in the part morning, of the constitution, you said? It's not part of the constitution, local government elections. It's not. Yeah. It doesn't, local government is not protected by the constitution. So even, even proposing to make um, representative full time, I don't know how that will work, you know, but you know, I, I've, 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 I'm done. I've, I've passed on my battle. I'm, I'm going to just enjoy myself on radio here in the morning. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's something that can be recommended to the, to the, um, the local government reform persons, because there is still, I mean, some debate and consultations. And, I tired and, with it's a, it's a living document. Because yeah. I tell, me, tell, tell, tell me something. Is, I, I, on, and you can correct reform, me. Hold on, hold on. Because the reform policy is the way that it is right now, doesn't mm -hmm. mean that that's the way it's going to be forever. Of course, as we go along and we see challenges and changes that are required, changes will be made. So it's not etched in stone, regardless of what we do. That's one of the benefits of it not being within the Constitution, because then you would require opposition support to have some of these changes done. And because it's but not did, something that can't They didn't do it either because, when they were in government. Yeah, so clearly, they're, they're not interested in it either. They can't block <laughs> it at this point. That's, yeah. that's the benefit of it. Hmm. But correct me if I'm wrong, isn't your WASA bill um, linked to your annual um, rental value of your property? Yes, so your, yeah, your WASA bill is yeah, linked. Isn't it connected somehow to that? Well, I mean, we use various databases uh, that we were allowed to ensure that the data was correct, but I'm not exactly hmm. certain with how the WASA, um, your WASA assessment would be involved in your valuation. That would be something for someone. No, 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 that your valuation will eventually affect your WASA bill. I'm That's where I'm going. I'm uncertain of that. I'm not aware. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Minister, yeah, we want to thank you call? this morning for being with yeah. us. We're going to have to have you back, uh, Minister Manning, where we could, where, because a lot of people are complaining we didn't take enough calls. So we're going yeah. to have to have, we're gonna have, to have if, if you would get doctor behave, then, you know, I, we could take more calls, but you always... Nah, but, well, yeah, that's that not happening. Happen. That's not happening. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's happening. So forget <laughs> it. <laughs> uh, all the best to you, Minister. Of course, I'll see you Sunday. Sunday.